Welcome to All Ears, the official podcast of the Cedar Rapids Colonels, presented by Miracle Ear. I'm your host and voice of the Colonels, Calvin Cristoforo. On the podcast, you'll hear from past and present Cedar Rapids baseball influencers, including players, managers, executives, insiders, and more. Cedar Rapids Colonels, let the good times roll. Back with another edition of the Colonel's Earlier Podcast, season number four, episode number seven. And we're so happy to be joined by Colonel's left-handed pitcher, Connor Prelip, for the show. Connor, good morning. Thanks for taking the time. No problem. Thanks for having me. Colonel's coming back home to start a series with the Great Lakes Loons, a rematch of last season's in West League Championship Series. But for you, Connor, you're just getting back on the mound, made your first appearance back with the Colonel's last week at Quad Cities, through two innings, very good innings. How do you feel? I uh, feel really good. Really happy to be out here back with the guys. Must have been a long process for you coming back. You pitched at the Colonels last April, and then you make your next appearance at the Colonels the next July. Obviously, you're going through surgery, recovery. Talk to me about that process. How difficult was it to battle through a recovery process, something that you've already had to do? Yeah, initially, it's really frustrating and it's really draining mentally. But at the end of the day, this is what I want to do. So it's what I have to do. And that's the way I look at it. You had surgery as well back in your college days at Alabama. Did you learn anything about the recovery process the first time around or the second time around that helped you through the second time? Um, just going through like all the exercises and like knowing like what I have to do to get there to where I am now. It was a lot easier just knowing what I have to do now. So it felt like I could do all myself a lot faster. Obviously still take it very serious, but just get it done. Do what I have to get done. You made your first start of the year in the Florida Complex League, one in the Florida State League, now one with the Colonels, hopefully with the Colonels the rest of the year here, uh, consistently making some starts. Uh, for you, I mean, what is success, you know, like obviously right now it's it's staying healthy and getting outs, but is that the mindset of I just want to be a consistent guy here day in and day out after, you know, some some blips in the, uh, the, the road up to this point? Yeah, my main goal right now is just being able to go out there every six to seven days and do what I can for the team. That's my main goal right now. Talking to Connor Prelip here on the Colonels earlier podcast, Tim's a twin stop, 20 prospect in a Cedar Rapids Colonels left-handed pitcher. Now you made your first start back with the Colonels. You've been in the Colonels roster for quite some time, but you've never pitched yet at home. That starts coming up this weekend. Uh, are you excited to, to get on the mound uh, at home as a Colonel for the first time? Yeah, I'm pretty excited to pitch in front of the home crowd, and it, hopefully it'll be a good time. It should be a, a good crowd here against the, the Great Lakes Loons, a team that the Colonels beat in last year's Midwest League Championship Series. Did you did you keep tabs in the team, you know, after uh, you were sidelined last year? Did you did you follow them in, into that um, Midwest League Championship uh, winning season? Yeah, I followed them for sure, because I, obviously I still had a lot of friends on the team and kept up with them, so it was nice to watch them bring it home. And, and they won it last year against Great Lakes. Is that an easier transition because, you know, some of the guys back from last year's team are still on this year's team. Obviously, you're working out with them at spring training. But is that a transition that makes it kind of smoother to hop into when you're when you're returning to a team that you kind of have some familiarity with, of course, with Brian Dinkelman coming back, Jonas Lovin coming back, the pitching coach. Is that an easier jump back into the uh, into the pool with the team when, when there's some consistencies along the way? Yeah, for sure, because you don't really have to do all the get to know yous and all that type of stuff. I already know a lot of these guys, and so we're already having a great time together. Let's go back to the start of your baseball career. You're a you're a Wisconsin kid. You grew up in Wisconsin. What's the what's the state of baseball? You know, in the state of Wisconsin, what's it like up there uh, in the in the lower levels in the high school levels? Yeah, high school is getting a lot better in Wisconsin due to, like, the travel ball facilities. Like, hitters and GRB are really, like, they have taken indoor facilities really serious. And, like, and all summer you're gone. Like, you're traveling all over. If you really want to take the game serious in Wisconsin. So there is there is places where you can get re- pretty good at baseball in Wisconsin. I'm sure there has to be a lot of uh, indoor facilities uh, that you got to take advantage of. Of course, our listeners in Minnesota have no sympathy about the uh, the weather, but I'm sure there's – a lot of good spots that the indoor training facilities are probably the place to be in the winter months. Yeah, for sure. You went to, uh, you, you get through your little league days, you get to high school. What was high school baseball like for you uh, playing in the state of Minnesota? Obviously a ton of success. We can talk about the, the high school numbers here in a minute, but what were the high school days like for you on the mound and a little bit with the bat, right? 
Yeah, it was really fun getting to hit in high school. But yeah, high school was a blast. Really fun playing baseball. Just anytime playing baseball is it's always fun for me. Were you one of those guys where they had to the, the pry the bat out of your hands? When did they, you know, not let you hit anymore? And, and was that a sad day for you? Uh, in travel ball, I was like 15. And yeah, it was frustrating at first. But at the end of the day, I, w- I knew I was going to be a pitcher. So it wasn't a big deal. But. And then high school, you, you were able to hit all throughout? Yeah, yeah. Not only uh, were, were the high school numbers great, uh, high school quarterback, and we hear from uh, our strength coach, Blake Kredovic, who you can listen to on season four, episode number five of the Colonel Teller podcast. Yes, two episodes previous to this. He actually watched your game film. You guys were potentially meeting up in the playoffs, and I think you guys came up on the short end, and they, they were watching the film with the defense playing against you. Uh, rumor has it you were quite the quarterback, slinging it left-handed. Yeah, I could throw it pretty good, but – I didn't have the greatest mobility, so it was fun, though. Yeah, yeah, we almost got to play Blake. That would have been that would have been funny. Which it was would be a crazy coincidence years down the line that you guys are are working together now. Uh, here yeah. in the Twin System, Blake, of course, the uh, Colonel Strength and Conditioning Coach, and like we said, you can listen to his episode of the Colonel's Earlier Podcast. That's two episodes back, season four, episode five. Uh, how did playing quarterback help you at all? Uh, playing baseball is there any you know way they help each other overlap? Um, it definitely just. It helps being in like always being in a team setting always helps every because just getting to know more people and like different cultures and different lifestyles that aspect and then just being like football obviously is a lot like physically taxing game so obviously that helped me a little bit just become a little tougher in all aspects of life not even just baseball and it's different for for different people you know people blossom at different ages but for you was there a point or something that happened that you're like okay maybe baseball is going to be a path for me to not only have success at the high school level, but the college level and the professional level. Uh, yeah, for me, like, uh, I guess, like, I started getting recruiting as, like, a sophomore in high school. So after that, and then luckily I was getting better and better, so more schools kept talking to me, and then that's when I realized maybe I have a shot at this thing. And your high school numbers, I mean, we keep circling around the drain here, but a point two seventy RA in 52 innings – 14 hits allowed in 52 innings in 2018. I believe that was your junior year. Uh, and, and then your success continues, a .85 ERA, 118 strikeouts in 49 in the third innings as a senior in high school. At some point, was it like, hey, this is this is too easy for me on the mound? Yeah, it got – it was pretty fun. I'll just say that. It was a fun <laughs> time. Yeah. I'm sure it was fun. Also, you hit 311, seven doubles, say 446. Uh, slugging percentage and you were a guy that got drafted out of high school it goes back to before COVID before the whole uh, draft got shrunk from 40 rounds to five then back up to 20 37th round by the Red Sox in 2019 did you expect that call to come in um I didn't know I was going to get drafted because I had previous offers like earlier in the draft that I turned down to go to Alabama so I I didn't know if I was going to get drafted or not but I ended up getting drafted. But my intention out of high school was never to really go to, straight to pro ball. Yeah, that was my next question. You were always a hard set, hard commit on on going to Alabama. Yeah. Why sure. was it Alabama for you? I mean, coming from Wisconsin is, you know, Wisconsin doesn't have a, a, a team, but this, you know, the Big Ten is, is right in your backyard. What made it Alabama the choice for you to to go play your college ball? Um, I really wanted to go to the SEC, and then my travel ball coach with headers knew the head coach at Alabama at the time really well, so I felt like a good fit for me. Did you? I'm sure you did head down to Alabama and, and tour the campus and get a look at the facilities. Um, what was the reaction when you when you saw you know where you're going to be playing for the first time down there? Yeah, down there, like you said, the facilities are second to none in the SEC and just in Alabama in general, like. They have everything you need to be a great baseball player. It's really, really cool what they got down there. And you got thrown right into the fire. You 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 go down there, and and I'm sure you must have had a, a really big fall season. What was the buildup like for you from coming out of high school to going into your first year at Bama? Yeah, I guess heading into that fall, like everyone sets goals for myself, and my goal was just to be like an impact player as a freshman, and I was able to have a good enough fall to set myself up nicely, and then. Obviously had a good freshman year and then was cut short due to COVID. Yeah, which is which is a frustrating thing. But before that happened, you were named the opening day starter as a freshman, which is something that is rarely happens at any school. And of course, rarely happens in the SEC. 
How'd you learn you were going to have that opportunity? Oh, yeah. The, the week before our last scrimmage was leading up to the year, our coach huddled this all up and told us the rotation, and it was a pretty cool moment. And you go out there, and, and you were just incredible. You know, 21 innings in a shortened COVID year. You don't allow a single run, earned run. Batters hit .077 against you. What was it like, you know, out of the shoot with that much, that much success right away? Yeah, it was pretty fun. Uh, obviously, it changed. Like, after that season, it changed my life a good bit. Like, I started to get a lot more notice, put myself on the map a little much more, and it was a lot more fun. Was there a, a point, you know, in that, those first 21 innings where you, and you kind of stopped and, I don't know, smelled the roses, but said, hey, this is this is going pretty well right now in my, my first year in college? Yeah, obviously I was aware that I was doing well, but at the end of the day, I, like, it was still early in the year, and I was still trying to maintain that the rest of the year, even though I got cut short due to COVID. Hearing is important to living life to the fullest. That's why inside every Miracle Ear store, you'll find better laughs at family barbecues. You'll find a better life is in store at Miracle Ear when you experience the Miracle Ear exclusive advantage. It starts with our free hearing assessment, plus innovative products that will fit your needs and budget. With free service and adjustments for life, call 319-243-7105 to schedule a free hearing evaluation and find a better life in store. Our local Miracle Ear team is proud to support the Cedar Rapids Colonels. Group outings are a great way to unwind and enjoy a night out, and we invite you to reach out to our group sales staff and see all the options we have. Everybody, everybody, everybody knows when you're at the game, the good times roll. Hey, hey, Colonels, let the good times roll. Cedar Rapids Colonels, let the good times roll. Talking to Connor Prelip here on the Colonels Earlier Podcast. This is season number four, episode number seven. We thank Connor for taking the time. Set to make his first start as a Colonel at home coming up this weekend against the Great Lakes Loons. Uh, a lot of people have different stories, you know, talking to college athletes of where they were when they heard the news. Do you remember where you were when you heard the news that, you know, the season is over? Um, yeah, we were getting ready to play Missouri. We were in the clubhouse, and our head coach called us into our like weight room, and he said, yeah, the season's over. There's no, I mean, he started with no, there's going to be no postseason, and then it eventually led to no more season. So that's how we learned. I was going to say, was there buildup beforehand? Did you know, like, you know, a week out or, or a couple days out? Because it kind of came really, really fast, starting what I remember from, you know, the ECC tournament in the basketball landscape, and I think the SEC tournament was going on basketball-wise at the same time, is, okay, no fans and now no games. Did it come that quick for you, or did you have any sort of day or two to be like, okay, it's this, and now it's this, and now it's – we're done? Yeah, I think we realized that, like, when the NBA canceled its season, like, two days before our coach told us that there was going to be no more season. Like, as soon as the NBA got canceled, that's when we all realized it's – we're probably going to be shut down pretty soon. And what do you remember of, about that? You know, I'm sure you're going through it with with your teammates, which is in college, you know, a close group, and it's such a snapshot of time. Really, only get one year with the same exact team. What was that like for you? And what was that? What was that like for that clubhouse? Yeah, it was a pretty emotional day because obviously guys are looking to get drafted. They're trying to extend their baseball career, and then like you get told no more season, and like it ruins, like ends, it ended a few careers for sure. Now, did you go back home right away? What did you do when the season was called? Uh, for me, I stayed at uh, I stayed in Alabama, and then it was there was a summer league in Meridian, Mississippi, and I played in that. That's where I was. Which got you set, you know, to go back for your sophomore year in twenty twenty one. Build up to that season. I'm sure everyone was was happy to be back. Um, and then you, you start the year, and unfortunately, just a couple of starts in. Uh, you get injured. That must have been a devastating time for you. Yeah, definitely. It wasn't the way I wanted this to all turn out, but uh, it is what it is, and I'm happy to be pitching now. We can run through your honors from your freshman season, but you know, national freshman of the year for some for some sites, first team all comp, first team all American. I don't think the SEC did uh, did postseason awards, but you know, 
national freshman of the year. How did how did you learn of those accolades, and what was your reaction? You know, after that that snapshot of time that you were getting all those awards coming into you. Yeah, everybody around me was just really congratulating me. Is basically how I found out. Like my phone was blowing up, and like they were just everyone congratulating me, and everyone was pretty proud of me at the time. So 2021 and then 2022, you're still working your way back uh, from from the surgery. What do you remember about 2022 and and, and revving up and, and trying to get back healthy for the pre-draft process? Yeah, 2022 was just a big rehab process for me, like a rehab year, and then do what I could for scouts before the draft, and hopefully was did good enough in my like pre-draft bullpens to someone to take a chance on me. Absolutely. And and what really made you pop from an outsider's point of view looking into this was the MLB draft combine. Uh, what was the process of, you know, going out there? Did you always know that that was something that you were going to try to go out and, and pitch at? Yeah, uh, it's like because it was kind of an, I think it was the second year of the combine. So it was kind of new. Didn't really know what to expect. But at the combine for me, it was just a lot of interviews with teams and then obviously through the bullpen. Which was really your first time back in front of a national audience uh, of pitching, I'm sure that had to be a really uh, nervous time for you, knowing that this is the first time and maybe the last time a lot of these scouts are going to see me pitch on a, a live mount. Yeah, I knew for sure it was it was going to be a big day, like, going into it, but, like, I've been playing baseball my whole life, so I was pretty excited to be out there and show what I could do because I knew what I was doing before I threw the bullpen. You know, and just, and just chatting with you, and I'm sure our listeners can – can pick this up. You seem like a really simple guy. Is it, is it easy for you to, you know, you know, put that the nerves aside and just get on the mound and have tunnel vision that, Hey, I got to focus in and just throw strikes. It's like I'm throwing strikes in the backyard. Yeah. I've always been pretty like even tempered my whole life. Emotions usually don't get the best of me, but yeah, that's usually how I've been my whole life. Pretty simple. So you toss in that, in that draft combine, what are the the reaction? What is the the buzz you're getting after that bullpen? I, did it did it really pick up after that? Uh yeah, it was. Uh, I knew that I performed well in the bullpen, so I knew like I I was just getting ready to get drafted at that point. After, did you have any indication it was going to be the Twins that were going to be the team that that called you? Uh, I I met with them at the combine, but I honestly had no idea who was going to take me before draft day. What was the draft day like were you, for you? Where were you? Were you with your family? Were you back home? And, and what was the day like? Yeah, I was back home. There was a lot of – I probably had over, like, 200 people at my house. So it wow. was, like, a big party. Because my brother also graduated that year, so we kind of had a double whammy there. Draft so party, grad party. How about that? Yeah, so it was, a, it was a big day. So there was a lot of people there. It was a good day. And what was the reaction uh, when you got the call that it was the Twins picking you at 48? Yeah, everyone was very excited, especially since they're close. So, like, if I ever do make it to the big leagues, it's going to be – hopefully everyone can come watch. And the Colonels uh, play in the state of Wisconsin. They they haven't uh, with with you on the roster, but, you know, it's it's a close uh, trip for you. Uh, what was the first couple of days like with the Twins? Obviously, you go down to Fort Myers and you're introduced to everyone. What do you remember about those first couple of days, you know, after the draft? Yeah, just getting to meet all the, like, the new draft class and then going through it. It's a lot of physicals and stuff like that, that, medical stuff, and then just basically getting to meet your draft class and seeing what Pro Bowl is all about. And your first spring training in, in 2023 is obviously different for a bunch of different people. What do you remember about uh, spring training for the first time? I'm sure it was an eye-opening experience. Yeah, it's pretty eye-opening, not knowing what to expect, but at the end of the day, it's all still baseball, and you're still – it's not it's a big team, but you get to meet a lot of cool people, and it's – Pretty fun experience. And we kind of picked up from there at the start of this podcast. You come with the Colonels to begin last year. You go back to the FCL. You try to make one uh, rehab appearance, but you eventually decide to to go for surgery a- again and then the, for the process to getting back uh, with the Colonels now here in, in 2024. Hopefully to finish out the rest of the season here as we play into late July, early August, which is crazy when you think about how fast uh, this season is going. Stay connected with the Cedar Rapids Colonels all year long by following the Colonels on social media. Catch up with the Colonels on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at CR Colonel.
We're talking to Colonel Prelip here on the Colonel's Elliott Podcast. Colonel's left-handed pitcher, Twins top 20 prospect according to MLB Pipeline. You're a Wisconsin guy. Let's let's go off the fields. Uh, what are, what are some of the activities you like to do? Are you an outdoorsman up there in Wisconsin? Um, yeah, I've been hunting and fishing my whole life. My dad taught me, and then I also just I I go golfing a lot now too. Those are my big three. That's what I do. Golfing is a big point of contention. I feel like on any uh, baseball team, but on our team, a lot of guys I'm I'm sure are competitive. I think you've only been out once or twice with this group. But I want I want the scouting report. Who's good? Who who's not out there on the greens? Uh, probably the best golfer on the Colonels team is Dylan Tatum, and then Nate Baez is probably a close second. Okay. And the two the catchers. Are... You think they you think they work in cahoots together because they're they're catchers? You think they give each other pointers to become one and two? Uh, I'm not sure. No, they're pretty competitive against each other too. Okay. So they're they're not they wouldn't help each other. <laughs> okay. No, especially if they're competing. But yeah, no, it's always a good time out there on the course. Who who thinks they're good but they're not? That's probably a good question to ask. Mm. No need to throw anyone under the bus, but if you want to, yeah. we're not gonna we're not gonna stop you to do that. Yeah, I don't think we have any of those guys on this. Okay, team, well that's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, when you go hunting and fishing, what do you what do you usually go for? So we'll start on the hunting side. What do you you hunt big game uh, or what do you go for typically? For me, typically, with, with baseball now, I really haven't had a lot of time, but I grew up like turkey hunting and deer hunting. Those are what I did the most. Turkey hunting and deer hunting. And, and I'm sure that's that's really big in the state of Wisconsin. Granted, I've, I've been there only for baseball viewing, but uh, from, a, from a northeast state where there's a lot of hunting where I'm from, I'm sure it's a, a big season up there in Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's a big deal. Like my whole family, it's a, it's a big deal in Wisconsin for sure. And the fishing side of things, I'm sure – that's a little bit more difficult uh, with your summer activity of baseball, but uh, what do you usually go uh, fishing for? I'm sure it's a freshwater fishing, typically. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, me and my dad and my brother, we, we do fishing for uh, bass, northern pike, and then muskies. Do you, ever, do you ever take any fishing trips, traveling up up to certain spots, or do you have local places that are that are good for it? Uh, we go local, and then my co- my uncle has a cabin in Hayward, Wisconsin. And we go okay. up there a lot in northern well, Wisconsin. Too. Was it a bit of a culture shock for you going down to Alabama from Wisconsin? I'm sure there's uh, fishing down there in, in Alabama, but uh, was it kind of a, a culture shock coming from the north to the south when you made your first move down there? Um, a little bit, but everyone was really nice down there and like opened me up with or let me in with open arms. And so it was pretty easy transition for me. Nothing too scary. And there was quite a few guys from the north on that team. So we all went through it together. Okay, absolutely. Uh, did you did you ever go fishing down in Alabama? Uh, a few times. Not too much, obviously, with baseball and everything. Not a lot of time. Talking to Connor Prelip here on the Colonel's Earlier Podcast. Colonel's left-handed pitcher. I'm Calvin Cristoforo. Uh, talk to me about Alabama football. Did you did you go to any of those games? And what was the atmosphere like down there? As someone who's only watched it on TV myself, it seems like it's a, a crazy environment in the SEC. Did you ever make your way over to any football games? Oh yeah, we uh, as being a student athlete, we would get uh, we would get free tickets, and then so we would sit right behind one of the goalposts, and it would be yeah, it's an electric atmosphere for sure, to say the least. What was the craziest game you remember going to? Oh, uh, I got to go to the when Joe Burrow was there. Okay. And that was probably the best one when they played yeah. LSU. We got to see that team. And that I believe, probably, even though they lost, but it was still a really cool game. I was going to say, I believe uh, that was the game that LSU and yeah. Joe Burrow won. Yeah. Growing up in Wisconsin, were you a big sports fan professional wise? Were you a Packers guy? Who were some of your favorite teams? Um, professionally, I grew up as a Brewers fan. But okay. and then football, I wasn't really a, a. I'm not really a diehard fan for anything. Okay. For football. But you yeah. followed the Brewers mostly when you were when you were going yeah. up. Who were some yeah. of the players you followed and, and looked up to as you're you're playing little league and high school? Um, my favorite player was Prince Fielder when I was growing up. Uh, because, yeah. and and you're you're a left-handed hitter, I would assume. Uh, so you yeah. try to maybe try to model your little league game after him. Yeah, exactly. And I just thought he was a really cool guy. Any pitchers that you looked up to, left-handed or, or otherwise? Oh, nothing really on the pitching side. Nothing crazy, no. 
Connor Prelip here on the Colonel's Earlier Podcast. Wrapping things up with Connor, chatting about uh, his baseball career, his his time coming back for surgery, and his his time off the fields. Baseball, golf, fishing, and hunting. Those are the big four for Connor Prelip. Am I right? Anything else? Uh, no, nothing too crazy. No. What is your favorite uh, meal? For me, uh, just steak. That's steak. all I need. <laughs> That's all you need. What about uh, yeah. a pregame meal before you pitch? Do you have something specific you go to? Mm, no, nothing typical. Basically, whatever the team's got out there. I don't. I'm not very superstitious or anything like that. So yeah, whatever they got. My for next me. question: uh, yeah. There's a wide range of pitcher superstitions. Uh, do you have any? You said no, but is there any? You know, pregame pitching routine when you're out there, you like to follow to a T. Uh, no, I don't got nothing. I don't have a crazy routine or anything like that. Just feeling loose and then get ready to take the ball. When you say feeling loose, is it something that, you know, in the pregame bullpen session, you can feel like, okay, um, I have my stuff today or okay, don't have my stuff today. Is that something that you can feel early on, like in a bullpen before the game? Um, yeah, I would say so. As soon as you start playing catch, I I basically know I'm going to feel for the day. And when you, but I feel like every guy's different. When you don't feel like you have your stuff, when you start to warm up, play and catch, how do you overcome that? Um, you just got to trust that you, your stuff is good enough to beat any hitter. You just got to believe in yourself at that point. Absolutely. And Connor Prelip is going to be using his stuff at Veterans Memorial Stadium this weekend when he pitches against the Great Lakes Loons. Connor, thank you so much for taking the time. We really appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for having me. This was season number seven of of season number four, episode number seven of the Colonel's Ollier podcast with Connor Prelip. We look forward to seeing you guys at the ballpark this weekend. Should be a fun series against Great Lakes and the rest of the 2024 season. Invisible hearing solutions for ultimate discretion. Miracle Ear is here to help. So you can find a personalized solution that fits your needs, lifestyle, and budget. Miracle Ear has over 70 years of expertise and over 1,500 stores nationwide. Make a sound decision. Call 1-800-MIRACLE now and book your free hearing evaluation. Your local Miracle Ear team is proud to support your Cedar Rapids Colonels. Enjoy the game.